everyone. Welcome back to the Mama Elephant 9th anniversary release. We are at day 7 of introductions. We have 3 more days of introductions for you. This is Rena. Thank you so much for being here. Remember to leave a comment on these release videos for a chance to enter a drawing to win a prize from Mama Elephant. The release will be available on September 15th. Make sure to also stop by the Mama Elephant social media all month for project inspiration from the design team, friends, and guest designers. Let's take a look at tree picking. Tree picking is illustrated by Ada Zamora, and we all love Ada's images. I'm going to pick my favorite. My favorite, of course, is the big one, <laughs> the big image with the car. But specifically, I like the little guy sitting on the Christmas tree in the back. Here is a look at the coordinating dies for tree picking. We're going to be using the same set of colors we've been using for holiday colors, the red and greens, and I'm naming this set of colors <laughs> holiday core. Um, so we're gonna start off by coloring the car. I wanted like a pink car. Um, so I believe we're using R32 and R30. I wanted to color these in the traditional holiday colors and I knew there would be a lot of green because of the trees. So I just wanted to pair that green with a lot of red. So we're going to do some really simple coloring. Um, I'm just using, I'm coloring everything that I, I want to be red in like a red color and that is R22 and R24. I love R22 and R24. Um, and the greens I'm gonna be using are G21, G24, and G28. And if I want like a lighter green, I'm using G21 and G24. And if I want like the darker end, G24 and G28. So someone asked an interesting question in the last video. How long does it take to color the images? So I'm editing right now, so I know exactly how much time it took to color all of these ones here for this video. And it's 45 minutes to color all of these. I don't think the actual coloring process takes too long. The part for me that takes long is, um, what do I color this? Do I have the markers? to make the color that I want it to be. Um, do these colors look nice next to each other? Um, do I, like how do I make it look a certain way? <laughs> so that's the part that takes long. So I try to take shortcuts, like I am like loving having these predetermined list of colors to go by um, because that saves a lot of time if you don't have to do all that totally colored this tree wrong. I think because it was on its side, it confused me somehow. Not sure why, but I do redo it later um, because I realized what I did wrong. Um, I put the shading underneath the branches, but it didn't look good with that standalone tree. So then I changed the darker shade to be at the bottom of the branches instead of underneath and I liked that way better so I redo this tree later but I just color over what I did. So this is the point I realized um, that I should redo the other tree because I like this darker shading in this placement better than what I did in the other tree. <laughs> And I'm like, oh no, I hope I can color over it. So this is one of those situations where you can color over something and it'll be just fine. I believe I did use the three colors on this one. Sometimes I try to take shortcuts and only use two colors, but I used the G21, G24, and G28 for this one because I wanted it to look just really shaded in. So now I'm gonna go to the other tree and fix it. Um, 
see how it, the right tree looks so much better than the left tree? So I'm like, I'm going to try to fix it. I don't like redoing images, especially I already colored the car and everything. So I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to force it. I'm going to make it work. So yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I like about Copic markers. Sometimes you can just color over it and just keep going and you can kind of fix your mistake. It doesn't look completely like the tree at the right, but it's better than it was before. And just the top part, it got really oversaturated. So I'm going to, of course, <laughs> cover it some, with some white gel pen stuff, um, just so it just masks the um, area that I don't like. And I think my markers got all mixed up. So I'm using a color that is not on the list. These are the end colors for the tires, but I think that's okay. So I, I think this is N3 and N1 maybe, and or N5 and N3. And then I have, I always have my zero marker next to me just to fix some little boo-boos and stuff. So I didn't wanna color the trim on the car gray. I wanted to add a little bit of color down there. So I'm coloring the trim in red. And I think the last bit of coloring is the animals. I just did a yellow for the headlights. Um, and for the animals, I kind of wanted them all the same color. So we're doing E30, E31, and E33. And I'm do the medium color first and then I go with the lighter color and in just the corners of where I want the darkest shading I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the E33 and blend out the E33 a little bit with the E31. So any part of the images that are white like the trim of the hat and the little tail I'm going to just put a little tiny wash of W00, just so it's not stark white. I had to add some music because I ran out of things to say. Um, but now we're going to do that W00 color in the white parts of the images. And then now we're gonna add some white gel pen uh, to the images for a little magical sparkle. And then also to mask some areas that I didn't like. So for the card today, we're going to be using Slim Comic Strip, and that was in a previous release. And I like this because it has four areas to make a small scene. And sometimes I think that's a little bit easier than making a giant card um, and you have to think of like an, an entire scene. Um, and this, it's pretty easy. You just put a couple images and you're good to go. The inset pieces, I'm going to be die cutting with a landscape die so I can have some snow drifts. I've also cut out the die again in a green color because I want the green color to kind of be the background color. Snow drift is a little weird because I needed room to make two sentiments. And the reason why I have two sentiments is because I needed to fill up space. <laughs> And then this little guy here, he's like helping the uh, little guy in the car 
um, up to the tree, but I couldn't make it work. So I'm making him interact with the sentiment instead. I'm just going to stamp out the sentiments using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And I always double stamp, like no matter what. <laughs> so I've created my card base, which is eight by eight and a half by seven, and you score at the seven inch side at three and a half, and that's how you get your card base. And then I've cut out the slim comic strip again in pink, and then I'll take all my little inset images and put them down. So my background is in that light green color, and there's my little sentiment that I did, and then also I'm going to pop in the little snow drifts and I had to really, you have to really pay attention to the cuts to make sure that you keep them in order so it's not confusing. I'm going to now create my little mini scenes and based on, you know, where they land and if I want the image in front of it, I'll pop it up. So I just think it's a lot easier to create three little mini scenes than like a regular A2 size card. And this went by so fast and I really like uh, the effect of like the four different scenes. And also one of the blocks has to be the sentiment. So it just makes it a lot easier. So I did color in two more Christmas trees because I wanted to fill in that last space really nicely because I only had that little tiny image, um, that little bunny with the hatchet. Um, and I just wanted him to have some atmosphere. So we did two more Christmas trees. And that is it. I'm calling this card done. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an awesome day. Stay safe and happy crafting. Bye guys. I will see you tomorrow for day eight.